Hello everyone and welcome back for some more of Lawrence Plays and this time we're, yes, we're doing Spec Factorio Space Exploration, everybody's favourite. And today we're out here on looking at Tulip and there's a very good reason for this. So I've been building up this area you can see here, which is an expansion to what I had before. Before I just had this actually slightly somewhat larger facility that was churning out large quantity, was taking in all of this Vita Melange ore and churning out lots and lots of this Vita Roast because... Basically, nearly everything that's done on my space station uses vitamin land roast or one of the things that can be made from it. And so it seemed like a good idea at the time to do the, the basic processing, get it to the sort of the the, the uh, lowest common denominator, as it were, um, here on on um, on the planet, and then ship it off in that condition, in that in that state. So we've got coming in here. It's getting crushed. It's getting cooked. It's getting put into little jars. I'm not sure exactly what all these processes are supposed to be, but whatever it is, we then get these little um, little coffee pots coming out with gr full of green stuff that's ready to be sent off. I think this might be spice and this one's roast actually. So yeah, but anyway, anyway, it's being sent off at this point. It was being sent off in the spaceship that lands here in order to be then processed further on off on Norvis, uh, on, on Norvis orbit, sorry. Then I noticed that if we have a quick look at Norvis orbit, we've got over here we have so we have this spaceship landing here and at the moment it's okay because we're not actually doing any um any serious biological science at the moment but if we have a look over here when we are running any of the biological sciences this station here just can't keep up we've almost got constant trains coming over dropping off the uh the vita Milan, the vita spice in order to send it out to be um processed for all of the later steps and that's because one of the things we're doing with it is turning it into all of the things that are required from Vitus, Vitus Spice. So we, we bring in the, um, uh, it's a Vitus Melange Spice, yes, this, this is the one we're bringing in. But then we're turning it into extract, we're turning it into reagent, we're turning it into epoxy. Um, we're not actually turning it into these cells. We're going as far as this stage. And all of those have quite significant multipliers in them. So it's actually not worth shipping it in that state, um, I've decided. And in order to save save logistics space so basically essentially to save the trains that are taking the the vitamin lunch spice from here bringing it over here and then doing all the processing here instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to, back over to tulip and here we're going to do all those steps here so instead so i've diverted as you can see here i've diverted these belts of um vitamin lunch uh, spice that are coming out of the original processing facility and the same down here and they're all being brought up here now so this first step is being turned into massive quantities of the vitamin Lange extract that's being that's filled up this belt quite happily. And then we're and and then we've got another belt that's turning into vitamin Lange extract that's being taken up here and turned into this vitalic acid. I think this one is. So that's then being passed out on, along here. And we're making the vitalic reagent and the vitalic epoxy. And then we've got another thing up here making even more of the the, the intermediate steps because that's that's as it's required. And if you look at the numbers. Let's say we took in an absolutely, a completely arbitrary honest gov, uh, 48 pieces of vitamin melange at the very beginning of the process. And then we process that, we crush it down, it produces 96 pieces of the vitamin melange, whatever you call it. Uh, what's this one called? This is just vitamin melange nuggets. So we can turn the vitamin melange into twice as much vitamin melange nuggets. Great. Um, we then turn that into uh, vitamin melange roast and it halves the amount of it. So at this point we got back the original 48 we had at the start. Then we um, <clears throat> then we process that again. There's a 50% chance of getting vitamin Lange spice out, so we've we've halved the amount again. So that brings us down to uh, 24 vitamin Lange spice after after the um, after, after our original 48 vitamin Lange ore. Then we process it again. It's another 50% of getting 50% chance of getting the extract out. So now we've got 12 vitamin Lange extracts. So you can see at this point we've quartered the amount that's coming through. In fact, we've halved it from the amount I was, process, I was transmitting uh, transporting before. So there's a um, a disadvantage to transporting it in, the, in this form if I'm going to need this form. The next one we then turn it into vitamin Lange, vit vitalic reagent, sorry that's what it's called, and that takes four vitamin Lange extract and some vulcanite to make one vitalic reagent, so it's quartered it again and we're now down to only making two of those and also, oop, no, back, back, that's not what I meant to do, and also we take two of the vitamin Lange extract to make one vitalic acid, so we made the acid and the reagent out of six of those to make one of each. So at this point we've got down to we're making four things in total out of the original 48 or we dug up or the 24 of these things we're going to transmit. And then finally we get onto the vitalic epoxy and that takes and we make one of those out of two each of the acids and the reagents and, and some sulfur as well but I'm not counting that up right now. So as you can see from this, all of this we may turn that 48 um, 
Vitamalange ore down into one single Vitalic epoxy. So there's no point in transporting the the, um, the Vitamalange ore out in, into space. Uh, and in fact, there's no point in transport. Oh, and it's not and it's not useful to transport the Vitamalange spice and then turn it into epoxy on site because you're transporting 24 times as much stuff as you need to. And I don't know if these all stack to the same level. Let's have a look. So we've got. Well, these aren't full. This is, this is mostly full. So that's going to be about. That's going to be probably at. 2,000 by the time that chest fills up. This one fills up to 2.4. Oh, 2.4 thousand. This one fills up to 2.4 thousand. This one fills up to 2.4 thousand. So all of these, as you can see, they're all they're all filling up to the same quantity of the stuff. That they're, so they all stack to the same level is what I'm trying to I'm actually trying to say. As does um, if we look down here, then not you. I don't know. I can't tell from there. Um, these stack to. Oh, these only stack to 50, so that's even worse. And then somewhere around here, yes, down here, we're also filling up here with uh, the vitality. Yes, yeah, so there's 2.4 thousand. Everything stacks up to it, has stack size of 50. So shipping things in there in a less processed format is extremely wasteful of logistics space. Not only in the rocket or the spaceship or whatever's transporting it over there, but then in the train at the other end that has to transport it around to where it's being then being processed. So, yes, I've decided to do a lot more of the processing down here on um, on Tulip in order to, to, to get around this problem. And there's another reason for this as well. So if we have a look at the um, biological sciences, if we have a look at Bio 4, you also need Vitamalange core fragments. And those can't be made from uh, the Vita, Vita Spice that I was shipping before because they're quite a few steps further up the process. So if we, if we look, look back at the um, Spice, Vita Spice, so, so Vitamalange spice is made from roast, is made from nuggets, is made from Vitamalange, which is made from the core fragments. So it's all that way back up the tree. So in that case, so that means we need to start digging these up, and, and you can't make these out of anything apart from digging them up out of the ground. So yeah, so we, we we're going to have to start doing that. So yes, I put in another um, another core mining system here, and. If you've been watching any of the previous episodes, this will look extremely familiar because it is exactly the same system as I've been using on um, all, of, all of the other planets, um, except reprogrammed to crush uh, Vitamalange nuggets and filter out Vitamalange nuggets to put, pass them up then into the into the system to be processed. So it's, it's working in much the same way. I haven't needed a train in here because this is so close to all of this stuff that it can just pass it straight up and then it'll be it'll be happily processed. Um, and then, as, as always, the uh, the stone and the act normal core fragments are being fed down here into into these warehouses, which are gradually filling up. And eventually, we'll have a spaceship come in and land here. As you can tell by the the fact that for some reason, um, can I get rid of that? For some reason, there's a um, a pylon in, and a oh, it's a pipe and a pipe as well. What's that? I don't know what all these things are doing here. Let's get rid of them all though. Um, hopefully, my bots can do that. So yes, as you can see by the fact there's loads and loads of trees and other detritus here, we aren't actually um, we haven't actually had a spaceship come come in here yet to do to, to pick all this stuff up. I haven't I haven't built up the spaceship for this yet. That's to come, but we are. But it's 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 sort of it's an in progress. Put it that way. We're 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 working on the system at the moment, but it is producing the uh, the vitamin the vitamilange that is then used processed into all the other things, um, and I'd say that's working quite well. Although I do think we need another one of these. Um, uh, splitters in here because we are currently only taking from one side of the of the system, which is not how these things are supposed to go. It's, you want you want to balance your outputs, especially as there, there hasn't actually been enough coming up here to keep the machines running. So yeah, we'll 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 do we'll make that slight improvement there. There we go. Now we've got a bit more coming through, and we can and this this can flow a bit more happily. So yes, we're making all of those um, all of those things now on site. And as you probably noticed as I was going around talking about it, it's all being fed down these belts here. So we've got the the, uh, the the Vita, the Vita core fragments here. We've got the um, process. We've got the basically we've got all the first three things that are made are going along here up into these um, these stations here. And the idea is that we'll have a spaceship very similar to the core mining spaceships that will come in, will land here, and the two separate. But this will have two separate trains that go to separate stations instead of both going out to the same place. So we'll have it land down. One one train will come out to pick up. Go, go around the bottom here and pick up these three things that I was talking about before, then trundle around and go back on the spaceship. The other one will come around here and do exactly the same with the other three. So we've got the, the epoxy, the reagent, and the acids. And so, we'll, and so the train will pick up all of the things we need and then go back onto the ship. 
and then the ship can take off again. And this this is relatively straightforward because we, I haven't even bothered, as you can see, by the fact there isn't an extra train here waiting. I've decided that because this is lower throughput, I don't feel the need to have an extra set of trains in here that are full, ready to go onto the ship. So instead, I've just gone straight for having one spaceship with two trains on it. And here we are here, we've landed on, this is, this is back in Norbis orbit, as you can tell, because we're in space. Um, and the two trains here are, have, are ready and they're completely full. They've got all of the extract, the uh, spice, the uh, core fragments, the epoxy, the reagent and the acid. Wow, I'm quite surprised I got all those. Um, and I'm not 100% sure I got them correct. Uh, so the idea from here is these trains will come out. There'll be a couple of unloading stations in here. And then those unloading stations will be connected in to this, this line that's coming up here. Um, we'll flow around here and then we'll have basically a system like a lot like these with the, with the warehouses and the, and the stations and things so the uh, so the trains can come through and just and and the LTN tra trains can come in and pick up all the stuff that they need so I think this should be fairly straightforward to finish off I just haven't had the time yet um, and it'll just loop around and join in up here somewhere so that should be should be reasonably straightforward I have, of course, had to put in some extra pipe work to refuel this 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 uh, ship, and the programming here was it was partly simple, partly not simple, because we don't. It only needs to go to two places because it can refuel here at the drop-off place and then fly straight back over to um, to, to to Tulip in order to to restock. So the way I've programmed this up, trains are fairly simple. They'll sit they'll sit in the um, on, on Tulip, they'll sit in the station there until they're absolutely full. That's fine. There's there's enough throughput there that I don't feel too bad about that. I think this should be okay. They, um, and in fact, there's not much point in bringing coming back when you haven't got a full load anyway. So they'll wait there until they're full. Then they'll go onto the spaceship. On the spaceship, it monitors this. this we have we've hooked up the station, as you can see here, to all of this logistics system all the way going up here. And so, oh, this isn't actually right. I'm going to have to do some fixing here. But the theory is that the train will depart from here when it gets a circuit condition A is 511, which means it's in Norvis orbit. It will then go out to the stations on Norvis, which I haven't put in yet. It will sit there until it gets a single tick, and that tick will come through when we'll, we'll have to put in some um, logistic, some uh, circuit conditions in there to basically to, to monitor all three of these wagons separately. So when any of these three gets down to zero, then the train will leave, and it'll come back into the spaceship. The spaceship monitors for what trains are in. So we've got here, we've got, which end are we here? This is saying if anything is less than zero, then... Right, okay. So what we've got here, these, this rack of, of comparators is, 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 is choosing whether we, whether, basically whether the ship leaves or not. And so here you've got, you can see, if, we're in, if you're in Norvis orbit, and you've got full of fuel, and you've got two trains in, because as, as you might remember from previous episodes, we've got the feed, we're feeding out from here the train signal, um, read train contact, read stop train, train ID is it? Train ID here is a T, and then we're saying if here if you've got a T, then output one C, and the same same over here but with an S. So and this one saying, where is it? Somewhere in here. That one is saying if you've got an S, then output a C. Um, so that will say when the, when both trains are in, we'll get a C from either side. So we'll be feeding up two Cs, which is what this is watching for. So when we've got the two Cs, we have another tick. And finally, we're saying that if any of them, any of the anything is less than zero, then output one tick. And the way that works is we're watching the contents of all of the trains, and I think we are trying to subtract. We obviously aren't doing this yet because I haven't finished it, but the plan is. Oh, yeah, here we go. We are subtracting 2,000 from each of the um, the contents. So if the train is completely full, then this 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 will show zero across the board. If a train goes around, comes back in again. If it's not completely full of everything, then we'll get a, a negative number out of that. So this, so then the um, then the ship will be ready to that, that will tell us that the ship is that the train the trains have left and come back in again. So the ship is ready to leave because I was worried that otherwise we'd have a situation where the ship would arrive and the trains wouldn't leave in time before the signals sort of propagated through and, and, the, and the ship was decided, reckoned it was ready to leave again. So I thought we'd better put in some sort of delaying fudge factor in here to make sure that this doesn't leave until at least something has gone negative. This isn't wired in yet, as you can see, 
so therefore it's not going to be ready to go. The other part of that is up here where we say if you're on a salier and everything is greater than zero again with this with this um, chest with this combinator sorry that will subtract the the quantity in here so everything will, get, will be less than zero no sorry um how does this work it's okay so when the when the trains have pulled in We'll have an everything will be greater than zero from that because the trains will have arrived and so that'll be so that these will be the amount of stuff in these will, will bring that up to greater than zero otherwise yeah okay so if, if you don't have full trains in there will be some things less than zero so this won't trigger um if the trains are in and full then then it will then it will trigger if the trains are in and not full then it won't trigger and that'll give the trains a chance to leave so yes there we go that's 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 the logic of it i do need to hook this up to here as well specifically this one and i need to think very hard about all of the numbers and make sure there aren't any other negatives around and make sure that basically just make sure everything is going to work so it's going to be a bit of thinking required here and I haven't done that yet, but that's that's to be done in the next stream because I got to the point where I got my ship up here with all of the stuff in it, and I thought, right, that's a, that's a good place to draw a line. We'll, we'll stop now and, and and have a bit of a think about it. So this will now have all of the things I need in it in order to get the um, in order to get the the biological science being made a bit more effectively. And I'll talk about this again in the um, in the next uh, episode because I'll have hopefully got it finished off then, and I'll be able to talk about all of the mistakes and foibles and things that I've learned since the uh, since the previous run since since this since this episode and hopefully that'll be um, interesting as well <laughs> I hope it will be so that's not all I've been up to I did notice in a um, quite a while back now that I was starting to have problems with a lot of the a lot of the fluids that are made from hydro hydrocarbons so the, the um, there was basically it, it was it was pushed over the edge by the oil light oil production because I'm using enormous quantities of light oil over here to make the rocket fuel that's going into um, in, into the into the probes in order to be taken off to go and get the deeps but the, uh, the the solar data and the, the asteroid field data so that that's getting through we're getting through quite a lot of um, light oil here in order to make that uh, so I noticed that it just wasn't keeping up the um, I was getting through massive quantities of coal being brought up from Norvis, and, and it just it was it just wasn't great. So, my I, ha I came up with this um, this plan to go over to Asalia, that's my oily moon, over here, and start and have another station dropping off just dropping off crude oil, um, probably about here, and dumping it into a spaceship, flying that up to Norvis up Nor Norvis orbit, and then we'd have had um, yeah we'd have had plenty of oil coming in we could have done the basic oil processing system along here and would have got and, and i think that would probably have been much more efficient we'd have got we'd have got much more oil out for the amount of we've got more of the heavy light and petroleum gas out for the amount of other stuff that we were shoving in there so it would have been yeah it would have been, it would have been good it would have, would have would have worked however then somebody in chat suggested hey you know there's there's methane ice in space you could you could start trying to use that instead it's a much more efficient way of doing things and so I discovered over here, yes, I've got a methane ice pocket over here. Um, there's 230, 560. There was, I think there was about a million of it here between the two patches before. Now we're down to about 800,000. So we've ripped through, we have ripped through 20% of this already, which is a little bit alarming. But this was sort of a backup idea. We thought, yeah, so I thought, okay, sure. I'll put some miners in here. We'll pull, pull it up. I mean, we do have, granted, we've got 57,000 of this in the station here. So we've actually only got through... 15% uh, of it, not 20% of it. But this can then be picked up from here by a train, brought over to the processing system here, and dropped off here into these into these stations where we've got about a thousand of it. Pass it over here. Go to the, this this is this system here, which um, does it use anything else? No, it just pulls that in, and then it produces it melts the methane into methane ice into methane gas. We can then using this machine. We can turn that into the methane gas into well we get uh, oh with with some bio sludge sorry we can turn the methane gas into contaminated bio sludge which we're dumping in in a in the standard um, uh, recycling station system and we can also turn it into uh, into heavy oil into crude oil which is what we actually want here so this is all now 
working together nicely to produce me some crude oil in a somewhat more efficient way. And I think it's more efficient. It's another recipe to play around with, which is always nice. And also it means I can uh, I don't need to fly all of the oil up from, from Asalia, which saves on rocket fuel and spaceship logistics. I can just dig it up here in, in orbit. The question is, what happens when this patch runs out? Well, I guess the answer is I explore a bit further out, see if I can find another patch. And if I can't, um, what's that? That's, oh, there's some, some more over here. So there's a little bit there as well. I can bring that in quite easily. Um, if, if I can't find more, I either then start shipping methane ice in from another asteroid belt. And if I have a look at my asteroid belt that's got um, a little bit of stuff going on, a very, very little bit of stuff going on in it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've already talked about this. If not, I'll talk about it in a future episode. Um, over here, we've got iron or stone barrel there doesn't seem to be any methane ice up here so maybe i can't bring it in from here but in theory i could potentially find somewhere else where i can ship it across from maybe or i can just go well that was fun while it lasted i'll rip out the um i'll just pull up the uh this this bit in the middle here and just start shipping up um crude, crude oil from asalia and feeding it through so it's it's not a big change so it's not going to be too difficult if, 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 if it does run out and i need to move over to that so those have been my two um, two advances recently. I've got the methane ice being turned into oils to, to solve my um, to solve the oil crisis I've been having, and I've I've got part way through getting all of the the biological stuff over from um, from Tulip. So bringing up the bringing up all the various various different green sludges from the other planet, and not quite getting them onto the LTN network, but you know getting a significant way towards that. So, up to come, as I say, is to finish this off and get Bioscience 4 going. And after that, well, we shall see. You'll just have to keep going back, won't you? <laughs> so, as ever, there will be... Um, we'll all, I'll always be doing the um, the Factorio Space Exploration streams on Tuesdays. Um, I think I might even be doing one over Christmas, because it falls on a day when I might actually be home. Um, we've got Factorio Space Industrial Revolution streams on Thursdays. That's me and some friends, and we're getting on quite well with that. So, uh, come along see how, how we're doing, and... Um, and, and, and maybe critique some of the massive sweeping changes we're in the middle of making at the moment. <laughs> uh, what else are we doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm still doing the GTA videos. I've decided um, I'm going to drop down to doing those only once a week. So they're only coming out at weekends now instead of on Wednesdays as well. Um, we'll see We'll see how that goes. But they were... I thought I want this way I can hopefully concentrate on just the best runs and get my... But basically keep, keeping a higher quality of it and maybe doing some other videos as well. I certainly want to do more car related stuff. So that's been... Uh, Yes, this has been Lawrence Plays. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll come back to plenty plenty more of the things I get up to. And until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>